to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at special engagement to attest to prospective financial statements. So I hope you all know what a prospective is. Once you hear the word prospective, because it's important to know what prospective is in terms of accounting context, is mean we are looking at the future, which is something unusual. As accountant, we always look at the past. When we prepare financial statements, we're always looking at the past. Here, we're going to be engaging um, in a task that's going to be projecting the future or looking at the future. Let's not use the word projection because it means something specific. There is a spot of assurance services other than audit in which we looked at reviews, compilations, review of publicly uh, uh, held companies, uh, attestation engagement. In the prior session, we looked at SOC report, and this will be the sixth session looking at this prospective financial statement topic. So once again, prospective means you're looking at the future, which is very unusual for us as accountant. So we always look at the past. So refer to predicted or expected financial statements in some future times, in, in, in some future period. So it could be the income statement or at some future specific date, which could be the balance sheet. Now, most CPA firms believe there's, there's an opportunity here to, to perform that service, but remember, there's also a potential risk. So why there's a potential risk? Because think about it, you are predicting the future, and when you predict the future, you don't know what the future, it's, if it's gonna materialize or not. So you're always taking that risk when you involve yourself in such, a, in such an engagement. And many CPA firms, frankly, they don't involve, and they don't offer the service. Okay, so the, the assumption is this, if the auditor can improve the reliability of the information, of the projected information, then the information risk might be reduced to the users. So if we have a good projection, good prospective financial statements, the risk for the users might go down. But at the same time, if we don't properly predict, predict the financial statement results or close enough, our reputation might suffer, we might incur legal costs, so we could have risks. So the risks arise because the actual result may differ from what we predicted in the prospective financial statements. That's why many CPA firms, they turn down that service for legal cost and liability. Now, what we have to, when, when we talk about forecast and projection, we have to understand what a forecast is and what a projection is because they are two different things. Let's start with forecast. Forecast our prospective financial statement that present an entity's expected financial position, okay, results of operation and cash flow. So this is what a forecast is. So basically, who uses the forecast? Lenders. Lenders might ask the company to, to, uh, uh, to get a forecast from their CPA firm. So you're looking at the uh, actual, pr uh, actual forecast of the statement. Projection is a little bit different. An entity's financial position, but it's more hypothetical assumptions. Here you are making basically, think of hypothetical assumption like wild assumption, okay? Our sales will go up by 10%. Our cost will not, our selling price will not go up. Selling price will stay the same. So here you're making more wild projection, hypothetical projection. Forecasts are a little bit more, you are being a little bit more conservative. It's based on the current performance. So wh why do we need to differentiate between the two? Because if it's a forecast, if you are preparing a forecast, forecast can be used for both general and limited use. So anyone can use the forecast, okay? Whether it's the company that you gave it to directly or the company can give it to a third, to a third party, okay? So versus the projection, because the projection here we're saying we're making some hypothetical assumption, wild assumptions, they are restricted to limited users. So we'll tell, we'll tell the company, okay, you want us to make this projection, but make sure we're, we're making those projection and you can only use them. So why do you think that's the case, okay? Think about limited users. Limited users, they can ask questions about those hypothetical assumptions. So limited users are in a better position to understand the prospective financial statements and the related is assumption than other parties. So if you're giving them some hypothetical assumptions that they're not really close to the truth or not to the truth, close to reality, not to the truth, again, keep the truth word out, then they can ask questions, okay? For example, if someone is interested in investing money, a potential venture capital, they can ask questions about those hypothetical assumptions versus the general public, they may not be able to understand those hypothetical assumptions, or they may not be able to ask you clarifying questions. That's why when you make hypothetical assumptions, you want to make sure you limit the, uh, uh, the projected financial statement. 
general users will have difficulty interpreting also the hypothetical assumptions because they, they may not have additional information, they may not have the knowledge, okay? So that's why the standard prohibit from issuing projection to the general public. Now there's a quick, uh, there's one exceptions that we, where we can use the projection as projection to the general public is when it accompanies the forecast. So if we made the forecast, then with that, within that forecast, we gave the projection as a supplement. Just make other hypothetical assumptions. Then we can let we can use the projection. Uh, we can let the projection report used um, be used in a general term, but not on it by itself. The projection on its own is of limited use. If it's if it's coming with a forecast, it can be used as a supplement. Okay. Now. The, attest, the AICP attestation standard prohibits CPA firms from, from performing review of a forecast. Why you, you would uh, prohibit them from performing a review? Remember the review involved analytical procedures and you are already making assumptions. So you don't make, you don't uh, prepare financial ratios based on hypothetical. So that's why you cannot perform a review of a forecast or a projection. You can maybe uh, uh, perform an examination, compilation. Remember, the attestation, as we learned in the prior session, let me just take it, take, just show you what we did in the prior session. Maybe it's important because I assume that you view it. It doesn't mean you viewed it. So remember, we the, uh, the, AI, the attestation function can be done on three level. Uh, let me go back here. Here we go examination reviews and agreed upon procedures so you cannot do reviews for uh, um, uh, for uh, projection or forecast because again reviews you need analytical procedures and you don't you know you don't have the the numbers to run the analytical procedure it's just a forecast let's go back to where we were because we mentioned this I mentioned this topic in the previous session but I did not emphasize on it but now it's the time to emphasize on it so AICPA created more specific attestation standard prescribing to the prospective financial statements. So for the pr prospective financial statements, you can do examination, which is in a, in a sense, examination is, is it an attestation or even you can call it an audit in which the CPA obtains satisfaction as to the completeness and reasonableness of all assumptions. So you can have, you can have an examination. You cannot have a review. You can have compilation. You remember audit compilation and reviews. You cannot have reviews. You cannot have compilation. Engagement in which the CPA primarily involved with the computational accuracy of the statement. So basically, you're adding all their numbers, making sure their numbers are right, not the reasonableness of the assumptions. If you're preparing a compilation, you don't care about the reasonableness of the assumption. They can assume whatever they want to. Okay? Or you could also do a projection as an agreed upon procedure in which the CPA and all users of the statements agreed on the specific rules here. But remember, it's a limited attestation procedures, therefore agreed upon procedures, as we learned earlier, you have to restrict their use because they're agreed upon between the CPA firm and the other parties. Let's take a look at what would an examination of a prospective financial statement would look like. What would the CPA do? Okay, well, we're going to evaluate the preparation of the prospective financial statement. We're going to evaluate the support of the underlying assumptions because remember, we are looking at the future again. The underlying assumptions will need to examine those, evaluate the presentation of the prospective financial statements for the conformity with the AICPA presentation guidelines. Are they following the AICPA presentation guidelines? And we issue an examination report. If it's, a, if it's an examination, you're going to issue a report. Just we issue a report. Now, bear in mind, the CPA is not attesting to the accuracy. We're not saying that those financial statements are right. We're saying, based on these assumptions, this is what things would look like. It doesn't mean we are guaranteeing them. It doesn't mean that the assumptions are correct. Now. As, as CPAs, we have to be familiar with the company. In order to make an evaluation, we have to become familiar with the client business, the client industry. Um, what key factors are they using in making those assumptions? And determining that the appropriate assumption has been included with respect to key factors. So what assumptions are they making the key factors? We think sales uh, is going to grow by 3% based on prior, prior period. Well, that's an assumption. We can look at prior period to see if that's reasonable. That's all what we're doing here. Okay. So this is basically um, uh, the, the, the session about prospective financial statement. Make sure you know the difference between a forecast and a projection. What can we use a forecast for? What can, you, what can we use a projection for? And basically the general idea of limited use versus general use. And the three types of engagement, examination, compa compilation, and agreed upon procedures. In the next session, we would look at, we'll define a little bit more what agreed upon procedure is. 
But if you have any questions, any comments, by all means, email me or see me in class. Make sure you read your textbook, complete your homework. As always, if you're studying for your CPA exam, study hard.